Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. It's Tuesday, so it's time for our usual crafty catch-up. Now today, our little catch-up is answering a question from one of our lovely friends and followers on here. So it's from Joni. And she um, messaged me and asked me if I could give her some suggestion how to use a stamp. And the stamp is this one. It's called Spring Trees. And it's got a gorgeous um, cluster of three trees here and some beautiful little foliage stamps. And she said she had it, but she wasn't quite sure of, of how to use it. And do you know, I looked through my box with tree stamps and I didn't have this. So I got straight on my iPad and put an order in. Anyway, it came yesterday. So I've been having a little play. So I thought I'd share with you the way my head works when I get a new stamp. Now, I have told you what goes on in my head sometimes is best keeping in my head and not letting you know what goes on. But I thought, you know, with this, we should be OK. Hopefully it'll behave. Now, the card I've actually come up with, my inspiration for you, Joni, is this design. But I'll show you how that sort of came about in my head. So what I did when I first stamped the design... I did this so just to explain so I stamped my trees just on, on spare bits of these are just off cuts of card and I just wanted to have a look at the two little stamps that come with it so these are the two and I have to say these are very very useful I, I can't believe I've never actually seen this set before so just to clarify it's called spring trees and the difference is, obviously, there's a little round one here and more sort of an, an oval one here. And this one, I've just used the round one and I did a couple of different colours. And then this one, I've used the oblong. Now, that almost looks like I'm um, hanging, um, what's it called? Oh, we know the plant I'm thinking of. Um, begins with L. Anyway. I'm sure you've seen um, plants like it. Just looks to me like it's all flowers sort of hanging down. Now, you could use a combination of the two together. But this is just how I start with things. And I thought about just building up the design like that. The next thing I did was I had a little go at creating. Just doing a standard um, stamp in them. And the longer one actually makes the most beautiful, um, almost garland, which I'll quickly show you. So if I just take a quick piece of card here. So this is going to be one of those sort of in informative videos as to how my head works, like I say. So just a very quick, if you want to do a quick garland, these acetate circle masks are perfect. And we'll just come in with our green... Let's use the one, we'll go for lime punch. Now again, this is just basically to give you a quick idea. So the larger of the masks in the middle, put your ink on your mask and we'll just go all the way around, just gently flicking out. This does two things. It gives us a nice bit of colour around for the garland, but also if you're somebody who's not exactly happy stamping in a circle, this gives you the circle ready and again I'm not adding much ink look and I'm just roughly going round there very gently gently does it but I will just wipe my mask if you'll just bear with me because I want to put that away and the trees if you look where have I put my acetate? Again, use your acetate. If you look, the trees just go beautifully there. So again, I'm thinking, dare I say, if you needed a sympathy card, but these are great for men's cards. I also thought of doing notelets. And what about doing a set of four notelets, spring, summer, autumn, winter? Again, I think that would be beautiful. And obviously you could vary the colour of the foliage. And obviously winter, just add some snow and frost on the tree. And again, you know, so, you know, my mind really started once I'd started playing with them. And this is what happens with me. I'm afraid my mind just goes. And, you know, I have a thing about these wreath cards. 
Right, you stay there. So I'm just going to use the VersaFine Clay to stamp in and I'm using the Verdant just because I think the colour will go well with the Lime Punch. And as I say, this is the longer one of the two that comes with it. And literally, if you just take it, because of the shape look, you can build up and this would give you depending i mean you could use this you could alter your color depending what time of year but if you wanted just a nice generic you know as i keep saying but especially for sorts of men's cards if um you know we don't want anything too flowery or to be honest just ladies not everybody likes flowery flowery over fussy things but this gives you such a beautiful and look it's so easy now again if you wanted batch card making this would be fabulous you know if you could make a few of these up and then when you need that quick card and look if you want a little bit extra just go in with a little bit See, that's going to annoy me there i need a bit that's better look at that let me put that back on again getting these good practices and just clean my stamp just with a piece of wet cloth and then my inky binky so look at that for a garland and as i say you could then add to that so that one little stamp gives you that fabulous and all i've done on this is stamped my trees and then i've added the gorgeous little um woodland fern because again, I think they just go perfectly. So again, look at what you've got for me. These spring trees, that woodland fern. I hope you agree, it just goes beautifully. So that was that design. Again, using that part of it. And then when I'd done that, my head wandered again. To if I could stamp it more than once. And so I came up with this. I'm thinking, you know, I love my DL cards, my slimline cards. Well, look at this. I've stamped the tree twice in first generation and then just once in the middle in second generation. And this, my idea was, I was actually thinking of a, of a sympathy card. And the idea was, I thought you could use greys. And then I thought, well, you know, you don't just have to use grey. So I've actually gone for confetti and that's in the elements and again that was so quick so depending what the card was was you can start at that you could leave that as a as a sympathy card and we have that beautiful um with love and sympathy on our heartfelt verses and that would look lovely on there wouldn't it um but you could if you wanted add some foliage again with our little stamps and mix it up a bit so again that's a nice simple but you could take it to the next level and it was from that that i then decided to do this one which is the one we shall make together today so i hope that gives you and that's just how you know there are so many you can mix and match all these different bits of of the ideas and and take it to wherever you want and this is the fun when you get new stamps. And also for me, it's seeing what stamps I've already got that actually will go with that stamp. Now I'm starting off with a piece of card here. It's eight and a half inches by four. And I've put my black Sharpie line round already. And I've got my stamp here on my Lavinia block. And I'm just going to ink it up. Now, I hope you're feeling okay. I hope everything's going well this week. It's obviously a very exciting week at Lavinia HQ. We've got our lovely extravaganza again this weekend. So excited. I can't wait to go and see everybody. I've bought some cheeky biscuits ready. So we can have a brew. We'll get Andy brewing up, I think. And um, we'll have a bit of a chat. It's always nice to have something to eat and drink, isn't it, while you're having a catch-up. So good that we can meet up. And, you know, if we can't meet up, we've got so many online videos, tutorials. There's going to be competitions. So, you know, do tune in and, and just see. I'm going to put my card on the side. You know what I'm like. I just need to check you can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to plant my trees there. 
because obviously the trees so you have to plant them don't you mind you Elliot brought home from school my little grandson um a sunflower seed a couple of weeks ago and a chart and we planted it and he said could grandma look after it because he was worried mummy wouldn't water it every day so I've been watering it and we've been filling the chart in well it's actually taller than him now so it's fabulous so I'm, I've had to get an extra long cane so I'm hoping it will eventually flower he's so excited though so definitely planted that seed and it grew and I turn it round every day the pot just to make sure it's growing nice and straight there we go as I say the most beautiful trees now to go with the trees I thought we'd use Pippin you know he's a bit of a favourite of mine and we haven't used him for a while so let's just ink him up I've got two black ink pads on the go here and I'm not sure which is I think this is my, my juicier one I do put the um, the dates on the back, but sometimes I get the pick the wrong one up when I'm in a bit of a rush. Do you ever do that? So let's put Pippin sort of here, and again, let's give him a bit of a yeah. That's lovely. And then for the sentiments, I've gone for two of the off the heartfelt verses. We've got the birthday wishes and the just for you. And I thought they looked nice together. So we'll take the birthday wishes first. Try and get it straight. If ever you can't get it straight, you know, look on your mat. You've got, use these lines as a guide on your mat they're very good I use them a lot if I'm putting tape on you know my masking tape so we'll ink up the birthday wishes and we'll put birthday wishes over here lovely and again, obviously my ink pad wasn't as it wasn't. I'm glad I've changed ink pads. It was my older ink pad that I stamped the trees in. But that doesn't matter because I actually like that look. So if ever that happens, don't worry. So put these back on. Birthday wishes. And I'm really trying to, especially with these little stamps, to get them straight back on and put away. Because how many of you lost Pippin? I mean, how many of you have now got two Pippins? I know I have, because he does tend to wander off. I think he goes on little holidays, little jaunts off. Luckily, I've always found him, but it's annoying if you're after that particular stamp and you can't find it at the time. And I'm just going to put this at a bit of an angle. I want it straight, but I'm just going to offset it. So birthday wishes just for you. And for me, when I was creating this design, I just thought there was a space here. So let's wipe that and then I don't get ink on my fingers and pop that back on there. And we've got a lovely pound butterfly stamp. And again, you know me, I do love these pound stamps. And I just thought the butterfly, now again, if it was somebody who didn't like butterflies or um, it was for a, a male and you didn't want to add the butterfly, you could leave that space empty. I must admit, I do think the fairy charms, that's the other thing I did wonder, whether to just pop a fairy charm hanging down there. And, you know, what I find is when I start creating a design, it sort of opens up your mind. And I gave myself so many options of what to actually stamp where. And I think that's the thing that if your mojo's gone, just start creating something. Maybe follow one of the YouTubes. And I think as you start creating, then your mind will sort of give you ideas of, oh, why don't you do this? Or and we'll just give that a blot. Obviously, Versafine Claire, it's a slower drying ink. And what we'll do is we'll add some of the landscape now. 
and for that we'll come in with our lovely acetate hill masks and we're going to have the flat one number one and then we'll go for one of these more sort of hilly ones I think and for this I've got my green stencil brush and I'm going to come in with my elements and I've got lime punch but also I've got olive so I may just do a combination I think we'll start with olive and I'll see how dark it is quite often I do that I just decide as I'm I want it darker at the front you see it'll help with the perspective so my first I'm just going to put under the trees add a bit of landscape here in fact I could just oh look I can catch Pippin just under under his legs and his tail there with the same so I'll just come in Again, take it off on the lid. I don't want to waste it on a piece of copy paper. I want to save all my ink. I'm like that. I'm very thrifty. What about you? Now, again, always go on your little mask first. But if I couldn't start darker where the trees are, I need shadow under the trees. So if that's where the ink is to start off with, then that's fine because I want that the darkest. And we can have a bit more shadow under Pippin. Look, I've got a thread hanging off my top. How bad is that? It's really annoying me. Do you know I'd not noticed that until now? <laughs> right, so I'll just gently, gently build that up. And I'm just going to move my mask, look, and just add a little bit at the end there, just to finish that off. Oh, and there, just under that tree, see, that will annoy me. Because I can see white bits under that tree and I don't want to. So if I just carefully put the mask back on, yeah, that's better. Right, I'm going to get a little pair of nail scissors, do excuse me. And I'm just going to cut this because that would really, <laughs> do things like that bug you or can you just carry on? You see, I'm the sort, it really annoys me. So that's what we've got so far. What do you think about that? Do you like that? And as I say, I love the instant shade in there. So we'll come in with our next and we're just going to add a few more sort of hills just to give a bit more. I'm just going to angle it that way. I don't want to go near Pippin's head. So I'm thinking there. And I'm actually going to put the lid on the ink. And I'm thinking I'm just going to use what's on my brush. I don't want to add any more. Because I think it'll be the same tone, but it'll be lighter. So that will help with perspective. And I don't want it too far this way. This is really where I want my landscape. So I'll just sort of flick it down a little bit. And a little bit round. I don't want to over overcook it. That's nice. And it sort of tails off at each end. So I'll just give my masks a bit of a wipe and then we can put those away again I don't like to put them away with ink on because if I pick them up and again if you've ever done that if you've ever been in a rush and put them away with ink on next time you get them out if you get ink on a piece like this and and it's Mr Murphy's law it's what happens and what we're going to do is we're going to add the moon now so we'll change from the green and we'll come to Della Blue. And again, just spend your time. Now I'm going to have to turn mine this way just because that's the way my head works. Now, again, just spend your time looking. You see, I could put it around the butterfly, but I think that's too... Sorry, if I turn it round. You could spotlight the butterfly, but for me... I think that just doesn't look right. The composition's not right. I could spotlight the birthday wishes. But again, I don't... I just think there, it almost follows that nice... For me, that's a better composition. And also, I love the way almost like that circle there is mirrored there. You see that shape? So that's what I'm going for. So again, in the lid. And always start on your mask. And I'm just going to do gentle flicks. Take some off on my lid again. 
and start at the bottom because that's when I've got most ink on and that's when my colour will be deepest. Come round and I'm actually going to flick almost across this sky to just bring a bit of colour into the sky. I don't want too much and that's why we blotted our ink because we don't want to smudge those trees. And these brushes are fabulous, they hold that little bit of ink so we can just get a little bit of colour without being too much. And if I lift that off, I bet you didn't think, let's give that a wipe, that there was much there, did you? But if I lift that up, can you see? It's probably quite pale. But again, that just gives that idea. And you're just building up such a lovely, lovely scene. And what I do want to do is just give my mat a bit of a wipe. Like I say, if not, I'll be putting my hand in it and then it'll be on my work. And what we're going to do next, so again, this could be a winter one. I mean, this could even be a Christmas card, couldn't it? You could add some snow. But for now, we're just going to use our lovely little circle, little sort of the smaller, the dotty one of the foliage. And let's come in with... The Verdant is the light green and we've also got Shady Lane and summertime is this lovely orange just to bring a bit of opulence to the design. So we'll start off with our light green and all you're going to do is just stamp. Quite funny these because it almost looks like a little swarm of bees but it's nice because it, it just gives you that foliage now obviously you can do first and second generation and that'll give you a, a lighter green so that's a nice way of building up and it's up to you it's your tree so you decide exactly where you want your foliage and how much you want so I'm mainly having the light green on this one I've decided so I'm doing first and second third generation and when I'm happy with that, just looks a bit off balance, I want another one there. I'm going to come in now with my summertime. And I'm going to just give my stamp a bit of a wipe, because if not, it'll dirty my ink pad. To be honest, this ink pad's a bit dirty anyway, but I don't want to dirty it too much. So let's bring a little bit... And again, first and second generation. I almost want a bit of colour, but I don't want it to look too autumnal. Now again, depending where you are in the world, it depends what time of year it is, doesn't it? So again, this really is a tree for all seasons. I like that. I think that balance is nice. So we'll pop that away and we'll come in with our shady lady, sorry, shady lane trying to be good and actually give her a proper name so again even though we're going to a darker colour just give my stamp a bit of a wipe now this is a darker green look so if I put it there can you see how lovely they look together and it just gives that extra depth helps with perspective and I have to say, it really is great fun to do this. The thing is, I don't want to overcook it. A little bit more there. Now there's a little space there. Just here. I've got some ink on my block, so I just want to get that off. I don't want to... Just there, I think. What do you think about there? Possibly last one there. Yeah, that fills that. Just at the edge there with it, second generation. Yep, yeah. right, stop. So I'll give that a wipe and put that back on the acetate again. With this being this little one, it's so important. Look, pop it back on your acetate. You don't want to lose these. And you know what Eric's like, he's under my table and if I lose one, chances are he'll be wearing it. Now, if you look on my finished design, we've got these lovely bits of shrubbery here. And you've guessed it, these, it's this longer. So all we're going to do is tear ourselves, look, some, 
of our copy of paper and just wipe my hands and we're just going to stamp so again I'm using the shady lane the darker color and I just want here so I'm just above here look so I'll try and get the copy of paper just where I want that and it gives me the most lovely lovely foliage so again we'll have some there and then I think we'll just have a little bit here and we'll have a tuft over here and again depending on where you've got your copy of paper depends how big a tuft you get so we'll have another one over here and actually I think I might oh I think I'll just probably put one at the top here look but coming off the page yeah so that's another use for this lovely lovely stamp so again this was the one we made the garland the wreath with so it also makes our little shrubs And again, I'm going to pop that back on here because I don't want to lose that. And we'll just turn that over and give that a bit of a blot. And it's so nice the way the whole design is just building up. As I say, I think this would make a lovely, you could put, what about having two rabbits and having an anniversary card or two of our little fairies? Again, you could make this into an anniversary card. This you could blossom. Make a beautiful tree with blossom, wouldn't it? So we'll just add a couple of little finishing touches. And I want to colour the butterfly. Now I'm actually going to come in with my watercolour pencils. I'm not going to add water. I mean, that's the thing. I'm one of those, you know, if there's rules, who says you have to go by rules? Now, although the watercolour pencils, like I say, I'm not actually going to use them as water. I'm just going to use them as pencils. And to keep the colours tone on tone, look, there's a beautiful green and an orange. So we'll just lean on our copy of paper there, our kitchen towel, and we'll put some green in the middle, look. And then we'll come in with the orange round the edge. And this way it'll just keep it all the colours tone, toned beautifully. And then we'll just come back in with the green and just blend that slightly into the orange. There we go. And the butterfly matches beautifully. Pop the lid on those. And then time for the, the pastel pencils. And we'll add a little bit of shade. So we'll come in with our dark green, our black. And let's get the white so with the white, we'll just add a little bit of highlight just down the side of the tree. Again, I'm not over being over fussy with this. And just on Pippin's tummy, look, a little bit on his ears. Got to do his tail. He's got to have a fluffy tail. And we'll just give him a bit of shape to his leg there. And again, and that's all I'm going to add with the highlights. As I said, I don't want to overcook it. But we'll add some shade so we'll come in with our green i've got my biodegradable little cotton bud here and we'll add some green under all the shrubbery to start off with and this is just one of the the darker greens what's this oh permanent green deep hence it's a darker green and i'm just going to use my bud to smudge it got something on there i don't know what that was and the smudging will do two things. It'll help fix it, but also it just makes it look more natural. And then I'll come in with the black and my moon's there. So we'll just add a little bit of shade from the tree. And that shade's going to go that way. And we'll add a little bit of shade with Pippin. And his ears are going to be like that. And then with the black... We'll just smudge that up a bit. Again, two things. It helps to fix it. But also, I think it looks more like a shadow when it's that lovely smudge. 
and it, that just adds to the whole again it's worth doing these little finishing touches and they are little but they don't take a lot of time do they but for me it just really really adds to it now should you wish at this point to add some glitter some sparkle some of our gilding flakes again it's totally up to you i'm actually just going to add a few little splats now on this one what i did was actually put the background on my card base first and then added my little water splats across the whole thing just because i thought that really added to it now it's up to you if you're somebody who doesn't like the splats again you leave them off if you want to add posca splats you can if you want to add more highlight you can i just like the almost artwork left at this level for this one so i'm just going to bring in with a little bit of my della blue on my mat and my fan brush is in my water pot tap the most of the water off i don't want too much and very gently gently and again the further away you have your fan brush the smaller your splats will be and the more gentle they'll be so that's enough we don't want to over splat it do we give that a wipe now again if you wanted to add some of the beautiful um liquid pearls into the tree you could but for me i just want to leave it at that that stage and for me that's the spring trees i mean again you could make an easter card with this couldn't you so thank you so much. So that's Joni Miller Zimmerman. Thank you for asking the question and for showing me a stamp I hadn't got. And as I say, I just had to go and buy it and have a play. So there's the one that we've done today. There's the original. And also, as I say, remember, just doing it plain with just the trees. Or what other woodland stamps have you got? Have you got the squirrel? Have you got the owl? I mean, the mice. Well, fox. So many foxes we've got, haven't we? Or do you like it just as it is with just the trees? So I'm hoping this inspires you. As I say, the stamp set is called Spring Trees and I can't believe I missed it. I really don't know where it's been hiding, but I'm certainly going to be using it from now on. So thank you very much for joining me. You take care, everybody. Enjoy the weekend and join in, please. We do love to know that you're there. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.